Hello, welcome back to Marvel Puzzle Quest with me, P.I. McLeod, and yeah, it's only a short one tonight, um, but there's a reason for it. It's because I'm kind of gearing up for what's going to come. Phrasing, right? <laughs> hey, Mark, welcome. Um, first off, this shield resupply window makes me a little happy to look at. That's a good amount of heroic tokens right in there, and 25 CP. Pretty good span of time. Anyways, okay. Um, what are we here for? Just doing a Crash the Titans tonight, but I really do need to get to this puzzle gauntlet, don't I? Um, I don't know if I can do that tonight. Uh, I got things planned. I might actually be streaming something on Xbox here in a minute. I know, it's kind of weird for me, right? But we'll get to it. Tomorrow night, I know I'm going to be streaming Come and Get Me, aka the Thanos boss round in the evening. Um, so, you know, some of the final hours, uh, four star only teams, stuff like that, just for people that might have trouble with them. Although you shouldn't, let's be honest, Thanos is the easiest boss in Marvel Puzzle Quest. I mean, what other boss gives you a bunch of bonus helpful tokens on the board to use and abuse? No one, that's who. So, thanks Thanos, never knew you were so helpful. Anyways, but what we're here for today, Crash the Titans. Um, I've heard, by the way, some people need help on the Puzzle Gauntlet, and I definitely want to get to it and help you out, but I will get to it on the video when I get to it. I know it sounds vague. I might even be able to get to it tomorrow afternoon, depending on how my afternoon goes. Don't hold your breath, though, okay? Um, I'll get there as soon as I can. Deadpool Daily, go! Uh, we're getting this Crash the Titans in before it expires, which is, well, in, less, in like, oh, over a day, but still. I got to do other things tomorrow night. Crash the Titans against five star mags. That's weird. Why is Magneto in here? Who's going against him? Um, this is <sighs> unfortunately the sad Magneto. And I say that because like we expected so much better out of five star Magneto. We had two star and three star Magneto forever and ever and ever and ever. And people were clamoring for a five star Magneto. Because let's face it, the dude is an ultimate threat. He is an amazing villain turned amazing good guy. and can he's, But he's so powerful and so good at what he does in the comics, in the movies, in whatever medium you're enjoying Magneto in, that he deserves an awesome five star rendition. And then we got this. Um, he definitely hit Marvel Puzzle Quest with a big thunk as he fell to the ground and no one really appreciated what he did. Um, he's got, uh, a yellow passive that makes it so that all friendly protectiles do more. They actually protect better for your team and even better still if for every extra X-Men on the team, X-Men or Mutant? Mm, I might look that up. But either way, you get the point. Um, his red makes repeaters, and the repeaters do damage over time, remove or remove enemy tiles over time, um, stuff like that. You know, like and it's it's helpful, but it's it's not what we were looking for. And finally, his blue puts him into the air. And when he goes airborne, um, after he comes back down from being airborne, which is like a couple turns. Um, for every like three yellow AP you have, he does like a bunch of damage. It's an actual really big single hitting nuke. Here's the problem with it. A, you have to spend the AP and then wait a few turns to get your payout. And B, while that's going on, um, while that's actually happening, uh, you don't have your passive to his, his protectiles. He's basically leaving your team and hence removing his passive protect um, protection from that yellow from the equation. So if your team is re relying on that defense, Magneto actually effectively leaves the team high and dry for a couple of turns to come down and do a big single hitting nuke. Um, and it's, I mean, it's great. Sure, you're gonna, probably going to kill somebody, but it takes a good amount of blue AP and it takes a couple turns to cast. So, I mean, to actually get off. So, yeah. He's very lackluster in the end when it comes to five stars and what they can do. Does he have his uses? Sure, but there's other characters that could do similar effects, but better. And that's the sad st story of five star Magneto. So am I scared of him? No, we're going to take care of him probably pretty easily, no matter who we're using. OK, 
Okay, that's five star mags in a nutshell. With Dark Beast, another Age of Apocalypse character, and this one is so much better. <laughs> what was that? Thanos to be was a cakewalk. Been using jugs, America Chavez, and Thanos. I, I, um, oh, Thanos was. A, yeah, man, I don't blame you, Mark. Uh, Jugs and American Chavez are both hard hitters. Thanos in this boss mode isn't going to stand a chance against a lot of characters, especially when you factor in those infinity gems he leaves laying around. Who leaves their gems laying around for other heroes to use? What a what a weird boss. <laughs> I'm surprised they don't do something with him and retweak him, so it's kind of like Apocalypse, where Apocalypse's four horsemen are working for him throughout the fight. I'm surprised he doesn't do something like that where, like, the gems are instead, like, repeaters that do things every so many turns. Because, let's face it, you know, the Infinity Gauntlet is his to control, not ours. Anyways, ah, whatever. Beast, Age of Apocalypse, go. This dude right here is an amazing match damage machine. And people don't talk about him enough. I mean, because when we talk about match damage, we talk about Karnak, we talk about America Chavez, we talk about Juggernaut. I mean, don't forget Rhino. Rhino's really good too, and no one talks about him enough either. Um, there's other match damage peoples, but Beast is one of these that um, is overlooked way too often, in my opinion. I want to start with his black because his black is the entire reason. Bleeding Edge. That's a passive, okay? At level 5, friendly attack tiles deal 5% less damage. That's not a big deal, right? But Beast's match damage is increased by 57% for every black AP you have. Okay? Let's do the math here. So in other words, for two black AP, you're doing over double of your match damage. Whenever an enemy matches a friendly special tile, which is also, this is also a good thing, Beast creates three Strength 51 Black Protect tiles. That might not seem like that big of a deal, but we'll get to another passive that actually melds with this really well, okay? Note that this Black is passive, so meaning you have no reason to spend the Black AP you're getting with him on your team, unless you have a teammate that uses Black, which honestly you shouldn't be doing that. If you're using Dark Beast, you should make it so you don't have to spend your Black. Because he becomes, well, a beast with it. Um, scientific method, the blue, okay? Uh, it costs eight blue to use, but um, it's you make two four-turn red countdown tiles that create two strength 12 black or green attack tiles each turn. So each turn they're out there, they create these tiles, okay? When the countdown expires, you stun a random target for two turns. That's all well and good. And it's it's fun. It's it's nice. It's not the point we have it here. This passive is really what we're looking at. If a friendly match includes a friendly special tile at level five, you'd gain three additional AP. Okay? That's of the color type you are. So like if it's a green special tile and you match it, you get three additional AP. I put it at four because two is enough. Let's, let's face it, if you match like a three green tiles and one of them is special, I'm getting five. That's still more than enough. Um, it's the same effect at this, but it, it doesn't stun as long. Okay, so the stun is two turns. I kind of like the stun being a little longer, so hence I put it there. It's a nice happy medium. And then finally the green blinded with science. There's no passive here, but it has a pretty nice effect. I'll put it at five so you can see full effect here. You deal damage to the enemy team, convert four basic tiles to blue charge tiles. At level four, it does the same thing, just a little less damage. I'm not using him for his green damage, okay? But I like the fact that at level four, you get four tiles changed to blue charge as opposed to three. Because this, it's any four basic tiles. You can make cascades out of this. This could actually cause board shake. And once again, blue goes back into scientific method or someone else's blue ability. So, once again, if a friendly match includes friendly special tile, gain two additional AP. Go out back to Bleeding Edge. You create three Strength 51 Black Protect tiles. Meaning if you match those Black Protect tiles with something, you're getting more Black AP. Does it make sense now? You have three basic tiles. One of them is a Black Protect tile. You match it. Now you got five Black AP instead of three. And each one of these Black APs means it's increasing your match damage by 57%. One match three with a special on it means you're raising your match damage by over 250%. Beast becomes amazing. You have to give him the black AP to do it, but he becomes such a hard hitter, it is laughable. 
I think people don't use them enough only because you need black AP to do it. Whereas like Karnak, you have to wait four turns. America Chavez, she just kind of works out the gate as long as you're matching, you're, you're gaining and you get credit crit tiles with it. But at the, at the end of the day, I think it's worth the work you put into Beast for this stuff. And he works well with other special tile creators, like Polaris, making more specials for you to match. Just an example. Four, I'm sorry, Mark, what was that? So a four-star rocket and Polaris with Dark Beast? Oh, yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, Mark. Now you're thinking, dude. Polaris is still going to do her thing, and then you have an even better use for that blue instead of his scientific method. A four-turn stun? Heck yeah. Um, Rocket's going to give you those seven specials off the rip to play with, which is more damage. And then Beast over here is going to make use of every bit of black AP that those two aren't using. Yes. Yes, Mark. That would be a fine, fine team. Anyways, are you ready? I'm ready. Beast is going to take it to Mag Magneto, and no buffs are needed or boosts. Let's put on the animations because it is a one-on-one -on -one fight. Okay, and we'll match that juicy green right there. <clears throat> got a little bit of black already. I wanted you to take a look at this before I even do anything. I got four black. Four black AP. Just four. Look at that match damage. We're already at 348 blue, 305 black. Okay. That's that's really good for a four star. We're already there. I'm sorry, I just had a... Uh, I think a bot <laughs> chatted to me on the, the channel and I'm not used to that. It's weird. Okay, I'm gonna ignore that. Seven black. Once again, let's go look at it. 529 blue, 464 black, 404 green. This is only two turns in. This is two turns in and we're at this. Karnak has to wait four turns to get his boost. I, I tell you again, like, <laughs> Dark Beast is overlooked quite often when it comes to match damage potential. I'm going to match this black. Magneto's not going to use it. Let's look at it again. 10 black AP, okay? 710 blue damage. 623 black. 543 green. Heck, team up alone is 355. It's ridiculous. Okay, so we're obviously doing good. Watch how much this blue does to him. 2,130 damage. He's hitting like a five star. He's he pretend he's pretending to be a five star character right now. And are you gonna tell him no? I will not. <laughs> he's scary. Um, I will match this match four. That's 1,600 out of a purple. That's not even his color. Um, I got no blues, got no greens, got no blacks, but I, I could do a small cascade for fun. That was almost 500, and that's not even his colors. Okay. What about Dark Beast, Cloak and Dagger with Domino? Um, yeah. Yeah, it's not bad. Um, I, I, I can see exactly what you're going for there. Um, you're not getting too much special tile help with it. You're relying on Dark Beast to do that in that case. Uh, Cloak and Dagger would make attack tiles occasionally if Black clogs the board too much. So it could go really well with your black tile creation, um, but you could be betting on way too much. Let's just say, for example, if you get um, a dry board, you know, like like there's very little black on the board. Of course, Cloak and Dagger and Domino are going to help you salvage that, but you have no special tiles to play with. I think your original idea of mixing it up, you have this match damage behemoth of Dark Beast, going in with a couple special tile creators you have two different win win ways you know ways of actually winning the fight right there look at magneto he's actually trying to win that's cute okay we get to do an animation scientific method Ooh, look at him go he's so evil so almost anything we do right now is gonna win um i'm just gonna match this green and it's gonna be over poor him I almost didn't want to do it. It's over too quick. But, um, yeah. Dark Beast is where it's at when it comes to match damage peeps. He's really good. Overlooked often. Plays well with special tile peoples. Um, he's got good flexibility. So, I would definitely recommend 
looking at him if you haven't already. Yeah, Mark, he, he's... It's the idea of having more than one way of winning um, that really is appealing out of that. Um, when you're doing Dark Beast, Cloak and Dagger, and Domino, you're obviously just searching for black tiles, and that's great, and it can work, but if you have too few black tiles to start, it's going to take you a few rounds to get the blacks rolling. Whereas with Polaris and Rocket at his side, you know you're going to have seven strikes at the start, and you know Polaris is going to multiply some of them, uh, you're you're gonna get rolling either with them or with Dark Beast getting his black AP. You're you're you got two different ways of winning. Um, that's one of the reasons why I now prefer Okoye with Gore instead of Okoye with I Hulk, because Immortal Hulk requires green tiles out there. I'm gonna get if I have the green tiles out there on the board. Sure, he's going to do team damage. That's Do the math. That's hitting three people for an attack boosted by Okoye, and that's great. But if there's not enough green tiles on the board, he doesn't hit anybody. That's zero hits. You literally got nothing out of that turn. Um, but with Gore, you start with the three repeaters on the board right at the beginning of the match, and it doesn't matter how many tiles are out there. You get three hits with Okoye's boost on them. And that way you're, you're triple dipping Okoye's boost. Now, of course, it hits random people, but still you're getting three hits of it, as, which is the same thing as hitting the whole team once. And there's no requirement to have a certain amount of colors on the board. So Gore slash Okoye is a more efficient damage machine over time. But I might get some flack from some people though on that but i uh i have yet to have any problems going through pves with that now two covers in for okoye it's all good man just work on her and hey okoye has two feeders nowadays don't forget we have uh shuri that feeds her and now namora so if you're if once you get up to four star land really comfortable you can start focusing on shuri and or namora and both of them feed okoye so you can raise her up quicker than we ever used to be able to. Okay. Well, that's it for this for now. Um, tomorrow I'll run back the come and get me. We're at uh, my alliance is beautiful. We've already got through round eight earlier today. Good job, everybody. Really proud of my alliance for doing it. Stepping up without, uh, without hesitation. I used to be one of the top rollers on it, but my alliance has been doing super good. Uh, special shout out to Mercy. Like, she doesn't have no champ five stars. This is what I'm telling you, telling you guys. You don't have to have champ five stars to beat down a boss. She's doing great. PLW has a few. And he's doing pretty good. You know, some of these people don't have maxed out stuffs this guy's got four champs four or five star champs good ones at that but that's where that stops okay moving on down the line it's pretty good stuff around here uh roll dog here has a good couple set of five stars but you know we're not talking giant m current day meta stuff you don't need to have the best of the best to do good in this it just helps there's other ways around it. Mercy's a good indicator of that. I think it's still impressive that she hangs with us and does this work. Anyways, thank you again for watching. I appreciate it if you joined the chat, Mark. I'll see you guys tomorrow as I run Cam and Get Me at the highest levels late in the day so we can see what it's like with the hardest goons with just four stars and under. See y'all later. Bye.